Hello, hello, and welcome to another Bible study revelation with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today on the channel, on this video, we are going to uh, do another video in reference to the righteous tree. <laughs> and this is going to be a uh, righteous tree, uh, part six. And with this revelation, we're going to look at the fruit, the fruit of the righteous tree, the good tree and uh comparison to the bad tree and the types of fruit that may manifest from the bad tree and then the type of fruit that may manifest from the good tree. Okay, so we're going to start our revelation in the book of Matthew where Jesus Christ is speaking. And uh, first of all, Matthew 7, starting at uh, verse 15. Now Christ says to beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. He says, Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. He says, A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, and neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. But every tree that brings not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire wherefore by their fruits he says you shall know them and not every one that says to me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that does the will of my father which is in heaven okay so he said that the bad verse 19 says every tree that brings not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire and cast into the fire uh, in this particular section in this chapter uh, they, with these verses he's talking about hell because he tells us here that at not everyone that says to me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that does the will of my father is the one that will enter into the kingdom of heaven so that just gives us uh, information just from reading those few verses that the individual that does not do the will of God is not manifesting the fruit of heaven, okay? Because in all, it's all about doing the will of God in the earth once you've been baptized into the kingdom, okay? And then we can take a look again at this over in Matthew uh, in chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, and then we can begin with verse 31. Jesus Christ is speaking here, too, because we're in the Gospels, and he's always speaking in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we're in Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. He says, I say to you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven me, but the blaspheme against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven by, you know, unto men. So here we see that those that blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Now, what does it mean to blaspheme? Maybe I should go back up. I am to verse 25 in that same chapter. Jesus Christ is having a conversation. He says, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every house, city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Okay. And he's having this conversation. He's saying this because the Pharisees and the scribes is calling him a devil. Okay, and so that's blaspheme. He's caught. They're calling uh, Jesus Christ a devil because he's operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, casting out demons. Okay, and so the Pharisees and the scribes they call him. Excuse me. They call him a devil, saying that he is casting out Satan by Satan, and that's impossible. And that's why Jesus Christ goes on to explain the, the process to them that uh, the only way one can be cast out is if one of the other is inside, okay? Either the Holy Ghost is inside and you cast out the devil, but you can't have the devil inside and cast out the devil because that's like the same house inside of each other, okay? And if you got the Holy Ghost, you're not going to want to cast the Holy Ghost out. But nevertheless, that's the example that he uses in order to explain that process to us and also, then he goes on to say here in verse 31, after explaining that to the Pharisees, he says, I say to you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, 
but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. And whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, okay, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, and neither in the world to come. And he said, either make the tree good, and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Okay? And in this, he's telling us here, the corrupt tree will be the tree that the one that actually talks about the Holy Ghost, okay? That blasphemes against the Holy Ghost, because that, in this particular, you know, we're just focusing on these verses of what Christ is saying here, because he gives us an example of what blaspheme is, and that's talking badly about the one that's going forward in the Holy Ghost, doing what thus says the Lord, the will of heaven, and then that indiv another individual calls them a devil or calls them operating in a demon spirit. You know, and you got to be careful. And this is uh, proof right here. Because when you do that, in doing that, there's no forgiveness for the indiv individual that does that. He says that here. It says against the Holy. He says, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. Okay? God will not forgive the individual who blasphemes against the Holy Ghost. And that individual is considered to be one that is a bad tree, a corrupt tree with, you know, bad fruit because they're talking about the kingdom. They're talking about the kingdom in which they have become a part of. They're talking about the power and the presence from which they have been birthed, okay? And if you are a part of the kingdom, you have discernment uh, in order to see and to uh, be able to know whenever an individual is operating in the Holy Spirit and you know therefore you should not mock that individual or talk badly about that individual and stating that they are a devil as the Pharisees was doing in the uh, prior verses in this chapter they were talking about Jesus Christ and saying that he was you know a devil he was casting out demons by a devil spirit. And you can't cast out demons by a devil spirit. And he began to explain that to them. So another example we can take a look at that same somewhat scripture at is Mark. And these are all in the Gospels. Mark the next book in uh, chapter 5. Jesus Christ is speaking again regarding this same example. The same uh somewhat the same scenario in verse 23 he says Mark chapter 5 uh, let's see if that right I'm sorry Mark chapter 3 Mark chapter 3 and then verse 23 he says he called them unto him and said unto them in a parable he said uh, again having the same conversation with some Pharisees some scribes who could not understand and did not want to accept the fact that Christ was that power, that mighty power from heaven and the earth rebuking, you know, the kingdom of darkness off the face of the earth and off of people. And he says to them, he says, verse 23, he called them unto him and said unto them in a parable, how can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. For if a house is divided against itself again, he tells them that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and he divides uh, and be divided, he cannot stand. So, but has no end. But has an end, I'm sorry. So he says, No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he'll first bind that strong man, and then he'll be able to spoil his house. So I say to you, All sins shall be forgiven unto, unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost has never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Eternal, forever uh, damnation. And we know what that is. Okay, because they said he has an unclean spirit. And that he explains it again in this chapter with that last verse. Because they said he has an unclean clean spirit, whenever he's operating in a clean spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost from heaven. So they called him dirty. They called his spirit evil 
and they called him Beelzebub. And that is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. So in the individual in the kingdom that does that, because again, we're making the reference, we're talking about the tree, the righteous tree, and the tree that bears bad fruit, and the tree that bears good fruit. The tree that would blaspheme against the Holy Ghost would be considered a bad tree that is bearing bad fruit because he is condemning the kingdom in which he is a part of. Okay? So, let me see here. Another scripture we're going to take a look at uh, Matthew chapter 3. I don't know how we got And that's just, yeah, Matthew chapter 3, we left off, well, because we were already in uh, Matthew, but let's go back over here to chapter 3 and verse 1 all the way to verse 11, where Jesus Christ is uh, letting us know, he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto, well, this is John speaking, actually, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Okay, so here we're just seeing where John is making the declaration and giving the illustration that he can baptize an individual with water because he's able to uh, basically set water or take you to a river or a pool or whatever and baptize you. But it is the it is heaven. It is Christ that actually baptizes you with the Holy Ghost. And he didn't have the Holy Ghost at that time yet. John didn't. Because Jesus Christ was the one that was coming with it to baptize individuals into the kingdom with it. Okay? So, uh, I think that's going to take us to the conclusion here with this uh, Righteous Tree Part 6. Where we actually, again, took a look at the righteous tree and that bear good fruit and then the righteous tree that bears bad fruit and knowing that tree by its fruit because that tree will talk about the Holy Ghost in a negative form or the individual with the Holy Ghost in a negative form whenever the Holy Ghost is going forward just like uh, the Pharisees did with Jesus Christ and he had to correct them and let them and gave us the uh, correction to what it is to blaspheme the, someone with the Holy Ghost or to blaspheme the Holy Ghost and how that the Heavenly Father does not for have forgiveness for the individual that does that. So we want to definitely petition heaven in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, O heaven, and ask you, O holy God, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, Lord, help us to not ever blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, in Jesus Christ's mighty name. All right? God bless you. God loves you. And I'll see you as we continue to go forward on the Feed by Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel.